scholars, before we get started today, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what I expect from you as far as um, when you're completing your work. So um, each of these we would be doing one every day for the video lessons that I'm completing, but um, if you are only able to do maybe one every other day or focused on maybe two a week, that's completely fine. Um, if other scholars get a little bit ahead of you, we'll catch you up when we're back at our school at Triumph. But um, what is most important is that you're doing your best at home to keep up with your learning so that when you are back at school, um, it's easy to pick back up where we left off and maybe even be a little bit further ahead. So I'm so proud of all of you for making the decision to um, keep up with your learning. You guys are so knowledgeable already and um, I can't wait to give you a reward when we get back to school for all of your hard work. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and get started with chapter three. And let's see. So we are here with vertebrates or invertebrate is the classification we'll be talking about today. So um, we may have heard these words before, we may not have, but I want you to notice that vertebrate, the first word in the title, is very similar to the word invertebrate, but it has a prefix at the beginning, I-N. That prefix in means not. So once we've figured out what vertebrate means, we may be able to understand what invertebrate means using that prefix not. So let's read and find out. Um, remember to follow along with me. If you lose your spot, just pause and we'll come back to where we were in a few minutes. Um, after we read this page, we'll be going back to our visual glossary so that you can take notes and have that as a resource when you're doing your work. All right. Brattenboro here again. You have learned that scientists who study the animal kingdom classify animals into different groups based on different characteristics. Some characteristics scientists study are what makes up the animal's skin, such as hair or scales, whether animals give birth to live babies or lay eggs, whether mothers feed their babies milk from their own bodies, and whether, oops, whether animals are warm-blooded or cold-blooded. And over here in our photograph, the captions underneath says, scientists classify living things by different characteristics, such as what is on their skin, if they lay eggs or have live babies, how they feed their babies, and whether they are warm-blooded or cold-blooded. So um, looking at these photographs, you can imagine all of these animals are a little bit different. Your job as a scientist is to observe these characteristics so that you can classify them. The first word that we're going to be adding to our visual glossary today is vertebrate. So um, if you've been following along with the other lessons, we have been adding to our glossary for this unit. And I'm going to start on a new page and just make a column for the words, a column for the definitions or the meanings, and a column for a little picture sketch to help us make a memory of what that word is. So this first word I'm going to write down, V-E-R-T-E-B-R-A-T-E. -E. Then I want to go through and underline the vowels in this word so that I can find how many syllables it has and make sure I read all of the syllables. So I see V is a consonant, E is a vowel, underline it. R is a consonant, T is a consonant, P is a vowel, underline it. T is a consonant, R is a consonant, a is a vowel, T is a consonant, and E is a vowel. On the end, it will not make a sound, but it might change the sound of another vowel in our words. So vert, a, bret has three vowel sounds, three syllables, bird, a, bret. And then the definition of this word, bird, a, bret, is an animal with a backbone. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm going to write that down in the next column. An animal with a backbone. I have a backbone. 
So I wonder if that means that I am a vertebrate. Hmm. If there is more than one animal with a backbone, we added a suffix s to make it plural, and it's vertebrate. So hmm, I'm going to draw a picture of a backbone and a person, a human body. Nothing too fancy, just like this, so I can I can remember what that is when I go back to it later. The next word here is invertebrate. Like I said before, it has that suffix I in at the beginning, but otherwise the word is the same as vertebrate. So if a vertebrate is an animal with a backbone, in means not. An invertebrate must be uh, an animal without a backbone. So I'll write that down. An animal without a backbone. I know my backbone helps me to sit up straight and control my body. I wonder what an animal without a backbone would have to do. So for this, we might leave that picture for later when we learn more about an animal that's an invertebrate. Um, for now, I think I'm just going to draw a worm. I know that that's one animal without a, without a backbone animal. The worm is an invertebrate. Oops. All right, the next word that we are looking at is spine. Spine. A silent E on the end. It has only one vowel sound, that long I. And you may have heard this word before. A spine is a more scientific term for your backbone. Easy definition there. So I'm going to draw that same picture like I did for backbone, but I'm only going to draw that spine. Remember to pause if we're going to quickly. The next word is spinal cord. Notice that spinal sounds a little bit like spine. It has that A-L uh, suffix on the end that shows us it's describing the kind of cord that it is. A spinal cord is a large group of nerves that connect to the brain and send messages to other nerves in the body. Large group of nerves that connects to the brain and sends messages. So it sounds like it's helping their body to communicate with different parts. Other nerves in the body. All right, and I'm not sure how to draw a picture of that either right now, so let's leave it for later. All right, those were actually our only definitions, so only four new words for this chapter. Um, we'll look out for the pictures um, of invertebrates and in our spinal cord as we read. Another key characteristic that scientists study is whether animals have a backbone. Animals that have a backbone are called vertebrates. Humans are vertebrates. Place your hand on the back of your neck until you feel a bump. Now, rub your hand up and down the middle of your back. Do you feel bumpy bones that run in a row down your back, from your neck down to your waist? That's your backbone. Another name for the backbone is the spine. The backbone or spine wraps around and protects an important part of your body called the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a bundle of nerves. Messages travel up and down your spinal cord from your brain to other parts of your body. There is a way, this is the way that your brain sends signals telling other parts of your body what to do. So humans have a backbone and are classified as vertebrates. So right here, kind of highlighted in orange and yellow, this is the, the backbone or the spine and inside of that, is the spinal cord, those nerves that are going to connect to other parts of your body so that your brain can tell them to move. Many other animals are also vertebrates. All mammals, reptiles, fish, and birds 
have a backbone, so they are all vertebrates. They have some type of spinal cord too. Animals with a backbone come in all different shapes and sizes. Apes, rhinos, horses, rabbits, bats, and yes, rats and humans too, are all mammals and vertebrates. Lizards, turtles, snakes, and crocodiles are reptiles and vertebrates. Huge sharks and tiny goldfish are also vertebrates. Small hummingbirds and large eagles are vertebrates too. So they're all different types of animals that we can classify as vertebrates if they have a backbone. You see they look very different, but these are all vertebrates in the photograph here. Uh, the caption says these animals are all classified as vertebrates because they have a backbone. But there are many more animals that do not have a backbone. Animals without a backbone are called invertebrates. Insects are the largest group in the animal kingdom. Insects are also the largest group of invertebrates. Insects include flies, wasps, beetles, cockroaches, ladybugs, and butterflies. Other kinds of invertebrates include earthworms and spiders. Ah, so earthworms, we already drew a little picture of a worm. If you want to pause and take a second to draw any of these other invertebrates in your column for pictures, you can do that right now. Some interesting invertebrates live in the sea. Lobsters, shrimp, and crabs do not have a backbone. The giant octopus is an invertebrate as well. Have you ever seen a jellyfish or a starfish? They are also invertebrates. So these animals do not have a backbone or a spinal cord. These invertebrates live in the saltwater environment of the sea. So their habitat is pretty different from those other insects that we looked at. I'm gonna draw with my worm. I'm gonna add a little jellyfish. That seems easy to draw. And then I can remember there's another type of animal in a different environment that is an invertebrate. It does not have a backbone. So that was it. This is a pretty short chapter. Um, I am going to post this page on the Google Classroom in another file if you need to pull it up. Um, as you're working on these questions, scholars, I want you to do your best to do them all without the text first. And then if you don't remember parts of it, you can go back into the video to find the part of the text that you need. Pause and then read through it to find text evidence to make sure your answer is correct. So this just the instructions say fill in the blanks or answer incomplete sentences. So for example number one we're only filling in the blank. For number two it gives us lines to write complete sentences. You can just do this on a piece of paper at your house since you probably don't have a printer at home. Um, and then uh, you can take a photograph of it to put in the Google Classroom to show me that you've done it, or you can type it up and add it as a response in the Google Classroom. Either one is fine. Um, this first question says animals are classified as vertebrates because they have a blank. Hmm, I think I know the answer. Why, number two, why are animals classified as invertebrates? So why do we call some animals invertebrates? Remember, when you're writing a sentence, you need a capital letter at the beginning and some punctuation at the end. Number three, your spinal cord is a bundle of nerves where blank travels up and down from your blank to other parts of your body. You might need to go find text evidence for that one. Number four, the largest group of invertebrates is blank. Hmm. Number five, mammals, reptiles, fish, and blank are all vertebrates. So we need to find another vertebrate. In the last number six, lobsters, ladybugs, and blank are all invertebrates. So there could be more than one right answer for some of these questions. All right, I'll leave you to it. Um, and then tomorrow, if you want to find another video, you can complete that as well. I'm so proud of you guys for working hard and miss you. Um, Y'all have a good afternoon.